Welcome everybody to part 6 of my Unity VR guide. Today, we'll be going over teleportation. We'll learn how to set up teleporting, how to use teleportation areas and anchors, how to make our teleportation look better, and how to use our thumbsticks to activate our teleportation. If you haven't been following this series, no worries. Every part is modular and can be done independently from all the others. Just download the GitHub project provided below, open up the project, and go to the corresponding scene to follow along. If you like a written tutorial, you can also find one in a link below as well. Opening up the project and going to our scenes folder, we're going to be going to part 6, teleportation. And let's go over the scene really quick. So you'll notice that we still have the table, we still have the ball hanging out there. And then opening up this, you'll see we still have our left and right hand controllers that have uh, XR Direct Interactors on them, our hand complete script that allows us to have hand animations. And then we have our left ray interactors and right ray interactor, but I've disabled them because we're gonna create new teleporting rays instead. So with our scene reviewed, let's learn how to teleport. And starting off, we're going to want to use a locomotion system. And we do that by clicking the XR origin. We're gonna want to attach this to it and then go down to here, locomotion system action based. So with our locomotion system in place, let's go over it really quick. We have this script here for the locomotion system that is asking for an XR origin and we can attach that here, but if we just press play, it's gonna go into the scene and find it anyways, but we'll save it a step. Uh, we have a teleportation provider, which we're going to reference later. And it has functions that we can use to help teleport the player. And then we have a snap turn provider that allows us to turn by hitting the thumbstick right or left. And I kind of like that. So I'm going to add it here for our right hand. And I'm going to look for the right hand turn. And oh, there it is. All right. And our locomotion system's ready to go. Now let's move on to teleporting rays. So right click the camera offset, go to XR and then XR ray interactor. And I'm going to rename it left teleporting ray. Now, if you watch my previous video, you're going to notice that the again, the XR controller is not filled out and we just fix that by going to the left controller. We're going to copy the components and then come back down here and paste it. And with that, I want to come down to the XR ray interactor and I do want to make sure that this is only going to interact with a new layer that I'm going to create called the teleport layer. There we are, and come back down again, select nothing, and then teleport. And to round this off, since it is only going to be a teleporting ray, I want to make sure I'm not interacting with UI objects. I don't have force grab, I don't have anchor control, and yeah, that's pretty good for now. Next, I'm going to want to duplicate this, so control D, and I'm gonna rename this the right teleporting ray. And just to make sure we have no errors here, this is set to the left hand since it's a duplicate. So we need to go to the right hand controller, copy its values, and then come back here and paste the values. So make sure you don't mess that up. Otherwise, you're going to get some pretty funky behavior. So we have a locomotion system in place. We have teleporting rays, but we have no place to go. So what we need now are teleportation areas and or teleportation anchors. To make them, all we have to do is come over here, go to XR and then teleportation area. I'm gonna add that in and I'm gonna add in some values really quick here. All right, and just to go over this really quickly, in the position, I just put the Y at a 0 0.002, and then I scaled it to a 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 straight across, and looking at it, there it is. Now, I do like things looking a little pretty, so I'm gonna come into this materials, and yep, I made a material for this video, just for this teleportation area, just so it looks a little better. With the teleportation area in place, let's make a teleportation anchor as well. So come in here, teleportation anchor, and I'm gonna enter some values in really quick. All right, and going over these values, I gave it a position of 3.002 and zero. And you're gonna notice on the rotation, I gave it a negative 90 degrees. That way it's gonna be facing this way, and that'll be important a little later. And then a scale of 0.1 straight across. Now, when it comes to components of our teleportation anchor and area, there's not a real big difference here. If you notice this little script here, the only difference is the anchor has a teleport anchor transform, and that's going to be right here. Whereas the teleportation area doesn't because 
you're allowed to teleport across the entirety of it. And with the anchor, you're just supposed to teleport right to the center anchor, that transform right here. And before I forget, you know what? That teleportation anchor looks pretty ugly. So I'm gonna come back to the material and teleportation anchor, and there we go. Doesn't look like a big difference, but you know what? It is to me. And one last thing I want to do before we start up the scene and test things out, I want to change the match orientation here. So by default, it is world space up, but for the anchor, you know, it's kind of fun to experiment with this target up and forward. And what that'll do is it will use the transform of this teleportation anchor. So what it considers up and what it considers forward. So it's a good way of forcing the player to face a certain direction if you want them to, and they're teleporting to a teleportation anchor. And I almost just space this, but we also need to change the interaction layer mask. If you remember, our teleport rays are going to be looking for the teleport layer. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. Well, let me hit nothing and then teleport. So it's only on the teleport layer. And then again, do this for the teleportation area as well. There we go. So with that, let's try it out. Uh, as you can see, I am teleporting around the teleportation area. But when I teleport to the teleportation anchor, it's going to be pointing me directly at the table, which is the forward and up direction that we set it to. Coming back to the editor, I think it's time we make our teleportation system look a little pretty. And starting off, let's fix these rays. Right now, they are a straight line. And usually when you play a game, they're a curved line and it has like a reticle at the very end to kind of show where you're teleporting to. So we're gonna come to the left teleporting ray and start changing that. And we're gonna go to the XR ray interactor. Starting off, I want to change that ugly straight line into a projectile curve and also lower this velocity. So this velocity determines how far out the ray is gonna shoot from our hands. And I think a six is gonna work for this project right now. Last, I want to add a haptic event. So just let the player know when they've entered an area where they can teleport to, and I'll just do 0 0.25, 0 0.25. Next, we're gonna scroll down here to the XR Interactor line visual. So kicking things off here, you know, first we have this line width, which I'm gonna reduce down to 0 0.01. So it's gonna be a little thinner. We do have a width curve here, so we can change the width of the line throughout the length of the line, but I'm gonna leave that be. Uh, we have the valid color gradient, which, you know what? I'm gonna steal some blue right here and then maybe lighten that. That looks good. And then I'm gonna copy this and paste it on this one. Very nice. And one last thing I'd like to do is lower this alpha. I'm gonna lower it to about 70. And so when it shoots out from our hand, it'll be pretty transparent, but as it goes along the line, it will become more visible. And here I'm gonna keep this red, but I'm gonna reduce that down to 70 as well. Next, I wanna add in a custom reticle that will show up when we have a valid teleportation target. And don't stress out, I already actually created a prefab for this. So teleportation, and then teleport reticle. And if you come in here, you'll see it's just kind of a reduced cylinder. It's a bit transparent. I added particle system, nothing too crazy. And if you did want to create your own, it's not too hard. Uh, again, the example, I had a cylinder. I just reduced it, changed some things to it. Uh, one thing I do want to point out, though, is make sure to get rid of this collider. Because if you leave that there, well, it's going to mess up the teleportation system and it gets very angry. So if you're creating your own, just make sure to do that. So to add these custom reticles, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select the teleport area and you're gonna see that it has its own custom reticle that it can have. And so I'm gonna just drag that there and then also do the same for the anchor. We could start up the scene, but I kind of did something goofy here. See, I only did the left teleporting ray. I should have shift clicked it and done both of them at the same time, but that's okay. I'm gonna fix that right now. Just click the left teleporting ray. We're gonna come down here in the XR Ray Interactor. We're gonna copy the component and paste it. And then do the same for the XR Interactor line visual. All right, and we should be ready to start up the scene. And there we go. We have a nice curved line. And when we hover over a valid teleportation target, we get the reticle with the particle effects. Pretty cool. Coming back to the editor, you know, I was gonna cover how to use these 
at the same time, you know, they'd activate, deactivate each other. But I didn't know if it'd be too useful. So let me know in the comments. I'd be more than happy to make a short video on that. Uh, the last thing I did want to cover, however, was the fact that we always have these active and you don't really experience that when you're playing in VR. Normally you have something that activates it, usually a button or the thumbstick being pressed forward. And I tried out both options and I gotta say, I prefer the thumbstick. It just makes more sense. It's a little more intuitive. Uh, I think Rec Room uses a button and I just found it to be clunky. So in order to make a thumbstick system, we're gonna have to dive into some code. And I actually found a good chunk of this solution from Justin P. Barnett. If you haven't checked him out, he's a great educational YouTuber on VR. Uh, but I did alter some things for how I wanted to use it. So starting off, I want to point out the fact that we're gonna be getting things from the input system. And if you don't remember about the input system, it is this guy right here, and we're gonna open it up, and we're looking for the left hand, uh, teleport mode, activate, cancel, and move. And on the right hand, we're gonna be looking for the same things as well. You know what, by default, it didn't have this move. I actually had to add this in and it will be on the GitHub project, but if you are doing this on your own uh, and you're wondering what's going on, why isn't the right hand working? It's because for some reason, move isn't there. So all you have to do is come over left hand and just copy over the same values. Just make sure it is for the right hand controller. With that, let's dive into some code. So go over here, we're gonna go to scripts, teleportation, teleportation controller. Now, if you wanna dive into the code, I'm gonna go over it right now, but you can also go at your own pace. I've left comments everywhere explaining how everything works. And if you don't care for it, well, feel free to skip ahead. Starting things off, we're importing the input system and the XR interaction toolkit, so we can use things from that later. I also have a static private bool, which is going to check whether or not the teleport is currently active. So this script is gonna be on both our controllers, and we don't want the controllers to be active at the same time. Moving on, we have a public enum called controller type, and it's gonna be the right hand or the left hand, which kind of explains itself. Uh, we also have a controller type here that we are going to use to determine which target controller we are looking for. Uh, we have a public input action asset, which is going to store our input system. Uh, we have the ray interactor, so this is gonna be the right or left ray interactor. And then the teleportation provider, which we will use to call on if we have a success successful teleportating event. And finally, we have three private variables here that's going to store three different input actions, one for the thumbstick, one for the teleport activate, and one for the teleport cancel. Cruising on down to the start function, first we unenable the ray interactor. Remember, we only want to have it enabled when we are pressing the thumbstick forward. And then we also need to grab the action maps for our teleport mode activate and teleport mode cancel. All you have to do to find it is you get the input action asset, find action map, you do the XRI space, and then the right hand or left hand controller, which that gets done through this target controller dot two string. And then we find the action map. Then once you've found it, you have to enable it. And finally, we subscribe a function that we have down here to a event called dot performed. And all that means is once the controller has signaled that this action has been performed, then it is going to call out and call our functions over here. And I'll go over those in one moment. Last, we grab the input action for the thumbstick input action that we will use a little later. And then if you look on on destroy, all I'm doing is unsubscribing our functions from the events that we subscribe them to. And that's just good practice. Sometimes it can cause funky bunks if you don't do that. So if you're doing a plus equal to an event, always do the minus equal. So let's go over these two functions right now. So we have the teleport activate and teleport cancel. This will be called anytime we push the thumbstick on the right or left hand. And so first we check to see if teleportation is active. And if it's not, then we're gonna activate the ray interactor of the thumbstick that was pressed and the teleport is active. So this is going to prevent the other thumbstick from activating itself. And then for the cancel, it's kind of the same thing, just flipped on its head. We want to see if teleportation is active and also if the current ray interactor that is calling this function is also active. And if it is, it can then 
disable these things. And finally, we can go over the update function where all the heavy lifting takes place. And what we are doing in the update function is looking for a series of events that is going to signal that we have successfully found a teleportation target and we are, can teleport to it. And those events are, is the teleporting currently active? Is the ray checking currently the active one? Is the thumbstick no longer being pressed? And then is the ray interactor actually hitting a valid target? And so coming down here, that is everything that I've just said. Uh, this one just kind of goes out, sees if a valid target's been hit. If not, then it turns the ray interactor off, tell, turns teleportation off and it returns. And then if all of these pass, we come in here, we find the position and make a teleportation request. And we come over here and we queue it up from our teleportation provider. And finally, we just unenable the current ray and turn off teleporting. Coming back to the editor, we are now going to attach this script onto our controllers. So I'm gonna put this on the left ray and then put it on the right ray. And we just need to hook a few things up. So starting with the left hand, we are going to change the target controller to left hand. Then we need to grab our XRI default input actions. Ray interactor is going to be the left teleporting ray. And then finally, we have the teleportation provider, which is going to be this locomotion system. Then we do the same thing for the right. Okay, and with our teleportating rays, now with the teleportation controllers, we just need to fix one last thing, which is going to be making sure that the ray isn't interacting with anything unless it is on the teleportation layer. And so we'll come back here, we'll select these two, and then change this layer to teleport. Yes, yeah, the children too. And then we grab these two teleporting rays and just come to the ray cast mask, nothing, and then teleport. And so when we start up the scene now, you should see that we can use the forward thumbstick on the right and left hand to teleport. If you found this video useful, consider liking the video. It helps me reach others trying to learn this content just like you. So thank you so much. Take care and bye-bye.